Good morning, pupils. It's glad to see you all again. And I hope you're all glad to see me likewise. Yes, this morning we are going to be teaching a very, very interesting topic under the subject of mathematics. Is that taking? Sit back and relax. I promise you we are all going to enjoy this topic. The topic on the board says estimation. But before we go into the topic, I would like to remind us of the fact that we need to keep safe and healthy. And how do we do this? By regularly washing our hands with soap and water. And in the absence of this, we can likewise use an alcohol-based sanitizer. Is that taking? Good. Now, the topic says what? Estimation. I know the word estimation is not new to many of us. Most are hearing it every now and then. But the question is, how do we estimate? What do we mean by estimation? These are the questions we are going to be giving answers to during the course of this lesson. But before we start, let's quickly look at the lesson's objective. The objective says, at the end of the lesson, the pupils should be able to A, write short note on estimation, that's one. The second says, solve problems involving rounding up decimal numbers to the nearest whole numbers. And number C, which is the third one, says, solve problems involving rounding of numbers to the nearest 10. That is, the first one says, again, write short note on estimation. That's the first one. The second one says, solve problems involving rounding of decimal numbers to the nearest whole numbers. And the third says, solve problems involving rounding of numbers to the nearest 10. Good. Now, I will state this objective. Let's now start with the lesson problem. The first on the agenda this morning is what is estimation? That is defining the principal word, the, um, estimation. Now, what is estimation? Estimation, according to what is on our screen, says is the process of finding the closest value to the right answer. Again, estimation is the process of finding the closest value to the right answer. Now, if I say, to estimate means to round a number to the nearest place value. Again, to estimate means to round a number to the nearest place value. Now, the question is, how do you round up a number to the nearest place value? Or how do you find the closest value to the right answer? Now, let's say, for instance, we are giving something like this to work on. Like we are asked to convert, let's say, 5, 7, 5, point 5. If you are asked to round this up or to estimate this, what do you do? Don't forget that this is 5. And as we taught in the previous lessons about how to approximate or round up, this any letter or any figure order that is bigger than five, that is up to five or bigger than five, represents what? One. Is that not so? No. If you have 575.5, it implies that you'll be having this one, which is what? The figure after the decimal will be changed to what? To zero. And thereafter, you add one to the unit, that is to the figure in the unit place. Now, which figure is the unit place? We have five. This is unit. This is your tens. And this is your hundred. Now, when you turn this five, which is the tens, when you turn it towards, when you turn this five to zero, automatically you take one and add it to the unit, that is the figure in the unit place, which is five. Then this becomes five, seven, six. Is that not so? Five hundred and seventy six. Point zero. So this zero is insignificant. So the same thing as what? Having five, seven, six. Is that taken? Good. Now, we further explain what estimation is all about when we look at some of the examples given to us here. The other one is they said. Let's look at some other examples 
in order for us to better understand the topic. Now, rounding off decimals to the nearest whole number. Rounding off decimals to the nearest whole number. How do we round off decimals to the nearest whole number? Now, look at the instruction I'm giving to us. They said, when rounding off decimals to the nearest whole number, look at the digit in the tenth place. Again, when rounding off decimals to the nearest whole number, they said, look at the digit in the tenth place. What is the digit in the tenth place? We see that as we go on. The next one says, if this digit is five, these are the instructions. If this digit is five or greater than five, replace the digits after the decimal point by zero and add one to the digit in the unit place. Again, if this digit is five or greater than five, replace the digits after the decimal, after the decimal point by zero and add one to the digit in the unit place. That was what I just did now. But looking at the example beneath, it says three, four, five, point what? Point five. How do you convert this? How do you convert this? Look at the instruction again. It said, if this digit is five or greater than five, that is the digit in the tenth place. And what's the digit in the tenth place? Tenth place is five. The digit in the tenth place is what? It's five. Because that is the figure we have immediately after the decimal point. Is that also? Now, every figure we have immediately after the decimal point is what is called tenth. Is that also? Now, you are telling us that if this digit is five, or greater than five, that is, if the digit in the 10th place is five or greater than five, replace the digits after the decimal point by zero, that is, you replace this digit, which is five, by what? By zero, which is what we did earlier on. Now, they said, and add one to the digit in the unit place. Which one, which digit is in the unit place? We have five to be in the unit place. Don't worry, I tell you that you have, this is unit, this is tens, and this is what? So the digits in the unit place is what? Is five. So automatically, when you are having this one to be zero, so you are, since this is five, then you automatically you add one to the what? To the digit in what? In unit place, which gives us what? Three, four, six. Do you understand? I will get what I'm doing now. So which automatically gives us what? Three hundred and forty-six. Because this zero is insignificant. Is that taking okay now? Good. Looking at the second instruction, and let's quickly go to the second instruction. The second instruction says that if this digit is less than five, again, if this digit is less than five, replace the digits after the decimal point by zero. Again, if this digit is less than five, if it is less than five, then you replace the digit after the decimal point by what? By zero. What this is telling us is that, if for example, look at what we have on the screen. We have 56 point what? Point 23. So what, how do we solve this? Is that if this digit is less than five, then replace the digit after the decimal point by zero. Two is two less or greater than five. Automatically, this two is what is less than five, which gives us what? Zero. They said, if it is less than five, replace the digit after the decimal point by zero. And what we have here, we have zero. But well, this is three. This is likewise less than five. So even if you are approximating, three is not to five, right? So when you add, you are not adding anything to this one, which is two. It still means two, and this two is not five likewise. So which gives us what? 56.00. Have you seen that now? Which is likewise the same thing as what? 56. Why are we having 56? Is because why are we not adding any one to this? We are not adding one because this two is not up to five. And as a result, we cannot add one to the unit. Is that taken now? So this one remains the same. It remains 56. Is that taken? That is the second instruction. When you convert decimal numbers. Now, let's look at some of the examples for us to have a better understanding of what we're talking about. Now, the first example says, 
round 6.7 to the nearest whole number. Round 6.7 to the nearest whole number. 6.7 to the nearest whole number. How do you solve this? How do we solve this? Good. Look up, everybody. We have 6.7, right? Now, the first question from the instruction was that we should look at the digit in the 10th place. And this is the digit. What is the digit in the 10th place? They have 7. That also. Now, this 7, is it less or bigger than 5? Of course, this is bigger than 5. Automatically, it means that we are going to be adding 1 to what? To 6. Again, this 7 is bigger than 5. So automatically, we are going to be what? Adding 1 to what? To 6. Good. Which gives us what? When you add 1 to 6, this cell becomes what? 0. The first thing they say you do is what? You change that number or digit in the 10th place to what? To 0. That is the number you make after the decimal. You change to what? To 0. And you add 1 to the number in the unit place. Is that not so? So and don't forget that this is the unit and this is the 10th. Is that also? So now, when you convert this one, you change it to what? To zero, and this one becomes what? Seven. Which is equal as what? Seven. Same as what? Seven. So when you convert 6.7, which is the decimal number, to the whole number, you convert it by saying this seven, since it is bigger than five, will be changed to zero. And one added to what? To the number in the unit place, which is six. And one plus six, don't forget, is what? Is seven. And one thing I want you to notice this this sign. Please. This sign is not equals to, it is equal to as well, approximately seven. Is that taken out? Approximately seven. Because in estimation, we don't get the right answer, we don't get accurate answer. You only approximate or round up. Is that taken out? So, therefore, you don't do the mistake of writing equals to. You rather use what? Approximately dash. That is approximately seven. Please take note of that. Is that taken? Good. Let's quickly look at another example here. Now, just like we did on the board, it said 6.7 gives us what? Gives us approximately 7. Do not forget that sign. Approximately what? 7. Is that taking? Good. Now, note something, which is what I explained just now. Note 7, which is the digit in the 10th place? 7. Don't forget that. Six point, we have 6.7. Is that also? Now, 7 is the digit in what? In 10th place. After that is after decimal is bigger than five. Now, therefore, you replace it that is the seven with zero and add one to the digit in the unit place, which is six. What they are telling us there is what we just did at this six point seven. Then you replace this is seven and which is the digit in the tenth what in the tenth place. So now they are saying that you it is bigger than five. Is that also now? Therefore, you replace it with what with zero and add one. To the what? To the digit in unit. Where is the digit in unit place? It's six. Then also, now, when you, when you add one to six, you have what? You have seven. That's why we have what? Our answer is to be approximately what? Seven. Is that taken on? Good. Now, let's move to the second example. Example two says that uh, I believe by now. You are getting what we are doing here. Good. Now, the number two says round of 8.3 to the nearest whole number. Again, round of 8.3 to the nearest whole number. How do you round this up to the nearest whole number? Just like we did the other time. Now we're having 8.3. Let's quickly look at something. Look at the way they solved it. He said, the digit in 10th place, note. Look at the note there. That the digit in 10th place, which is 3. Where is the 10th place? The 10th place is it. That is the 3. Then also, that is the figure after decimal. And where is the unit? These are units. Then also, now, the digit in 10th place, which is 3, is less than 5. Then also, is what? Is less than 5. 
Therefore, you replace three with what? With zero. Why did it in unit place remain unchanged? Again, therefore, you replace three. That is, now, this three that we have here is less than five. And do not forget our instruction. Our instruction says that whenever you are having your tenth digit, that is, the digit in tenth place to be less than five, you change to zero. But note, don't add anything to the unit because it is not up to five. So therefore, what you do is what? This three will become what? Will become zero. That is insignificant. And you, you what? You leave your eight as it is without changing it. So therefore, 8.3 is approximately what? Eight. Why? Because this three is not up to five. Is that again now? So it represents zero. So you're not adding anything to eight, which gives your answer eight. Our approximation to what will be eight because you're not adding anything to the unit. Is that taken now? Good. Now, moving to another example. Now we have, um, I hope you all understand what we just did now. Good. It is very, very simple. Just follow the instructions and you get it correctly. Now, let's quickly move to another one that says, rounding up numbers to the nearest 10. Rounding up numbers to the nearest 10. Earlier on, we've done rounding up decimal numbers to what? To all numbers or converting decimal numbers to what? To all numbers. Now, we are going to be treating what I call rounding up numbers to the nearest what? To the nearest 10. Now, how do we round up numbers to the nearest 10? That's a big question that we need to find answers to. Now, during the course of this lesson, as we go on, we're going to be looking at how we can convert numbers to the nearest 10. First, what are tens? When you say 10 to the nearest 10, what do you mean by that? 10, don't forget that. Examples of 10 are what? You have 10, you have 20, 30, 40, 60. Then also, these are all what? These are all what? 10. And so on and so forth. Now, how do we now convert numbers to the nearest 10? That's what we're going to be doing. Now, Let's look at the examples we have. Example one says, round up 17 to the nearest 10. Round up 17 to the what? To the nearest 10. How do we round up 17 to the nearest 10? How do we round up what? 17 to the nearest 10. We can round up 17 to the nearest 10 by what? This is 17. The first thing you need to know is that what? 17 is closer to which of the 10? Is it closer to 10? than to 20. Don't forget that 17 is in between what? 10 and 20. Then also, we have 17 in between what? 10 and 20. Now, 17 is closer to which of these two? Of course, closer to 20. So when you are rounding up 17, your answer will be approximately what? Will be approximately 20. You cannot say 10 because it is closer to 20 than what? Than 10. Is that taking up? So when you are asked to approximate any number, any given number, you ensure that you approximate that number to the closest 10 or to the nearest what? 10. Is that taking up? Very, very good and simple. Let's quickly look at what we have here. Just like what we just did now. You said 17 is approximately equals to what? 20. Why? Because he said, note, look at what they wrote there. He said, 17 is closer to 20 than what? Than 10. Therefore, the nearest 10 to 17 is what? Is 20. The nearest 10 to 17 is what? Is 20. Please take note of that. Another example says, round up 33 to the nearest 10. Round up what? 33. To the, near, to the nearest 10. So now, how do you run this off to the nearest 10? How do you run up 33 to the nearest 10? Look at it, everybody. We have 33. Now, 33 is in between which of the 10? We have this 33, right? That this 33 is between what? 30 
and what? And 40. Is that not so? 33 is between what? 30. So it's bigger than 30. And less than what? And less than 40. Now, tell me, which of these two digits is 33 plus than 2? Which of them? Which of these 10? You know, this is 10. This is another 10. Is that not so? Now, which of these terms is 33 closer to? 33 is closer to 30 than to 40. Is that also automatically this 33 will be approximately equal to what? 30. Because 33 is closer to 30 than to what? Than to 40. Is that also correct? If you are getting what we are doing here, very good. It is very, very simple and very straightforward. Is that also? So whenever you are asked to approximate any figure, to the nearest term, what to do is to look at what the figures, the term in front and behind that particular figure, and look at the closest to the figure. Is that taken now? And the closest will give you what the right answer. Look at what they wrote there. They said 33 is approximately equal to what 30, as we have done on the board. Said, Note 33 is closer to what to 30 than 40. Therefore, the nearest term to 33 is what? Is 30. The nearest term, the nearest term or the closest term to 33 is what? Is, four, is what? Is 30. Right. Now, please. Now, let's quickly do one more. Let's see this. What if you are giving figures like 70? How do you estimate this to the nearest thing? Now, you can estimate this by seeing the figure given. What is the figure given? 73, right? Now, we have 73. Now, 73 is in between which of the terms? In between 70 and what? And uh, 80. Now, the question, anytime you write out the terms, the question that should come to your mind is, which of these 10 is 73 closer to? Now, looking at the board, 70 and 80, and you have 73. 73 automatically is closer to what? 70 down to what? Down to 80. So 73 will be approximately giving you what? 70. So it will give you approximately what? 70. What if you are having a figure like 86? How do you convert this? You have it 86. Look at this, 86. How do you estimate this? What are the terms 86 standing between? 86 is standing between what? 80 and what? And what? 90. Is that also? 86 is standing between what? 80 and 90. Now, which of these terms is 86 closer to? Of course, 86 is closer to what? To 90. Than it is to 80 because this is 86. Don't forget that the midpoint is what? The midpoint is 85. And anytime you are converting, take note of this, anytime you are estimating, if the figure given to you is up to 5 or above, you are rounding up. Take note of that. If the figure given to you, again, if the figure given to you is 5 or above, you round up. Is that taken out? But if the figure is less than 5, you round down. Is that again? So now, we have it, if it is 85, let's assume we have it. Okay, let's solve this case. We have 86. 86 is more than 5, right? If it is 6, it's more than 5. So automatically, you round it up, which is what? Which is you 90. But if we are to be having, let's say, what if we are having, what if we are having 75? What do you do? If you have 75, do you run up or down? I told you, this is 5, right? Don't worry that 75 is in between what? 70 and what? And then 80. So when you have 75, what are you doing? Are you to run up or to run down? You are to run up because this is 5. I told you when you have 5 or more, you are rounding up. Which automatically gives us what? This answer to be what? Approximately 80. But whenever we have figures, we are having a figure, let's assume we are having a figure like, uh, 
I made people like 42. This is in between what? 40 and what? And 50. So now, are you rounding up or you're rounding down? Of course, you're rounding down. Why? Because these two is what? Is not up to five. Automatically, your answer will be approximately what? 40. Are you getting what we have been doing? Hope you understand what we've been doing since. So, estimation is a very, very simple concept. What you just need to do is to apply what the instructions given to you. So, whenever you are asked to estimate any figure, like changing of decimal numbers to whole numbers, you know what to do, right? And when you are asked to do what? To convert or round up numbers to the nearest term, you have likewise know what to do. Is that not so? So, please, let's quickly look at the summary of everything we've been doing. Now, in summary, so estimation is all about rounding off or approximating. Yes, from what we've been doing since, you can see that estimation is all about what? Rounding off numbers, rounding off or approximating. When you round off, is that you round up or down? Is that taking down? So good. So everything you've been doing since is approximating and rounding off numbers. Is that also good? Now, going to what you've been doing, do, do not forget this, that when you are rounding up decimals to the nearest old number, look at the instructions again. If the digit is five or greater than five, the first one says, when rounding up decimals to the nearest old number, he said, look at the digit in the tenth place. Look at the digit in the tenth place. And what's the digit in the tenth place? I told you that the digit in the tenth place is the figure after the decimal. After the decimal. Is that taken out? The digit in the tenth, tenth place is the figure after the one, after the decimal. So whatever figure you are having after the decimal is known as what? Tenth. Is that taken out? So now, if you are to round off decimals to the nearest whole number. The first thing you need to do is what? Is to look at that figure in the template. That is, is to look at the figure after the decimal. Now, number one says, if this figure, that is, if that figure in tenth place is five or greater than five, if it is five or greater than what? Five. Replace the digits after the decimal point by zero. Look at the example given to you. You place the digit after the decimal by zero and add one to the digit in the unit place. Is that taking up? Now, they are telling you that, like the example given there, 345.5. Is that also? Now, five, don't forget that five is what is up to, is up to five. We are having a figure, our tenth digit or tenth figure is what is up to five. Automatically, we add one to the number in units, that is, don't forget that we have 345.5. Automatically, you're adding one to that five to make it 346. Why the five, which is the tenth, the, the one after the decimal is changed towards zero? Take note of that. The second one says, if this digit is less than five, replace the digits after the decimal point by zero. If this digit is less than five, you place the digit after the decimal point by zero. Now, if you look at the example given to you now, the, the main difference between this, this instruction now and the first one we read, we read out is that whenever your tenth number, that is the figure in the tenth place, is bigger than five or up to five, you add one to the unit. But whenever it is less, you don't add anything. You just leave it the same. You only change that figure, that tenth figure to zero. Whereas in the other one, we are changing the number in the tenth place to what to zero, and thereby adding one to the figure in the unit place. Is that also now? This one is telling you that after changing the tenth figure, that is the, the digit in the tenth place to zero, you don't add anything. Why? Because the figure is less than five. It's not up to five. Are you getting that now? That is the main difference between the two. So always look at the number or digit in the tenth place before you know what to do. So if it is less, if the number in, le in tenth place is less than five, you do not add. You only change everything to zero. 
and write the whole number as it is, that is 56 without changing it. But if the number is up to five, you change it to zero and add one to the figure in unit place. Good. Now let's look at the evaluation which is corresponding with our objectives. Now, don't forget that our objective says at the end of the lesson, we should be able to, what, to define or explain what estimation is all about. But now, having gone through the lesson and after our discussion, we should be able to, what, to explain or tell what estimation is all about. Now, the first question is saying, what is estimation? What is estimation? What is estimation? I've told you that estimation just means rounding up. Rounding up an approximation that is looking for the closest value to the answer. Is that taken now? So when you are estimating, the first thing that should come to your mind is that you are not giving the accurate answer. You are not giving the accurate answer. You are only giving the closest value to the answer. That is why I told you earlier on that you use you don't use equals to for the answers when you solve questions on estimation. You use approximately sign approximately equal to because you are not giving an accurate answer you are only trying to get the closest value to the what to the answer is that again number two says round off the following decimal numbers to the nearest whole numbers round off the following decimal numbers to the nearest whole numbers so how do you round off 6.5 that's the question how do you round off 6.5 to the nearest whole number i'm giving you the steps to take on the rounding of decimal numbers. Then also, I told you, we have A, we have 6.5. 5, which is the digit in the 10th place, is up to 5. Then also, the digit in the 10th place is up to 5. Now, what that implies is that you change it to 0, and what? You add 1 to the digit in what? In unit place. And which digit do we have in the unit place? We have 6. Then also, so you know what to do about that. The second question says, 10.7, 10.7. The first thing you need to do, just like I said earlier on, is to look at the digit in the 10th place and which digit you have in the 10th place. We have having seven, and that is the digit after what? After the decimal point. Now, if you're having seven, do not forget, seven is more than five. Seven is more than five. So if you're converting it, it means that well, after changing seven to zero, what do you do? You add one to what? To the one to the digit in what in the unit place and what does that give you i don't know you do that on your own this third one says 23 point what point four now four is four greater than five or less than five that you can answer yourself now having done that you know what to do next you change the four which is not up to five to zero and do what and you do you add I don't know whether you add or not because I don't know. If four is not up to five, then what do you do after changing to zero? That is left to you. Now, the third one, which is the last one, says that round up 86 to the nearest 10. Round up 86. Round up 86 to the nearest 10. How do you round this up? How do you round this up? You can do this. Very, very simple. You know where 86 falls into. 86 is falling between what? 80 and 90. So now, which of these 10 is it is closest to? So which, that's what will give you what? Your closest answer. Is that taken up? Good. I hope with this few explanation and discussion of us, you'll be able to understand or gain one or two things from the topic estimation. Good. Now, God bless you all. I please urge you all to always study your notes. Work on this on your own. Do not wait for anybody to start persuading you to study. Please study your exams and fast approaching. Study it. Explanation is a very, very interesting topic and simple as well. Please do that. I pray God bless you and stay safe. Please stay safe. Health is wealth. Good day.